Ubiquity recently released an environmental sensor and a Siren PoE that can be connected to Superlink and used with Unify Protect. Ubiquity sent me one of each, and I've only been able to use them for a few days, but in this short time period, I've been able to determine that I basically want to replace all of my leak, temperature, and humidity sensors around my house because of how well they've performed. The range is amazing, and it's hard to put this into context, but I was able to go about 100 feet away into a different building, two stories higher than the Superlink with an environmental sensor, and it still worked. Then from a setup perspective, it's also super easy, which isn't always the case with these types of devices. In fact, the environmental sensor is so easy to set up that I didn't realize when I pulled the tab to activate the battery, that basically sets the whole thing up. So I can't even show you that. For the Siren PoE and Superlink, you adopt them the same way you do with just about all other Unify gear. So rather than showing you how to set them up and how they work, I want to show you a few different scenarios where I plan on using these to hopefully give you ideas that you can use to improve your smart home monitoring or automations. The first is for my home lab, and it has to do with my server rack. I have a lot of equipment in my home lab and specifically my server rack, and it gets pretty hot. So I wanna monitor the internal temperature and humidity. I have a general range that I know it has to be in, but if it goes higher than that, I know that the fans at the top of my server rack aren't working properly. To do that, I'll set a temperature and humidity safe zone, then create an alarm that basically says that if the temperature or humidity is outside of these values to send a notification to my phone. Since there's also a light sensor, I wanna be notified when the light value increases. So I'll set a light safe zone that basically says that if the value increases higher than this to send me a notification. With these safe zones, I'll be notified if the temperature or humidity's value is higher than the expected threshold or if the server rack side or back panels are opened. I am almost never doing maintenance in that server rack and if I am, I'll disable the alarm. So this will be a good way to know if anything is going on inside of it. I want to go back to that light sensor though, because it's something that is going to end up being pretty important for me. And while I don't have this fully configured yet, I plan on using it in a fairly unique way. I have a safe and realistically, it's not bad to be notified anytime that safe door is opened, but I don't necessarily need an alarm to sound every time the safe door is opened. So I basically plan on setting up a G6 PTZ and an alarm that will move the G6 PTZ to the safe if the light sensor is tripped. That would indicate that the safe door is open and that's where the camera should focus. After that, I can create a second alarm that basically says that if the light sensor is outside of the safe zone and the face on the G6 PTZ is unknown, notify me and sound the alarm. This isn't a perfect science and will probably require a little trial and error, but you can see where this is going. Pairing an environmental sensor in an area that isn't traditionally accessed and backing it up with a camera as well as the siren can provide a lot of options to validate that for infrequent tasks, you're at minimum notified on your mobile device and in a worst case scenario, an alarm is sounded. The next area where I plan on using the environmental sensor is as a basic temperature and humidity alarm in my HVAC room. It's an area that I'm very rarely in, and if the temperature rises or drops above or below the safe zone, there's generally a problem. And I'm comfortable enough creating an alarm and sounding the siren in that scenario so that I'm aware of the problem as well as everyone else in the house. The next area that I plan on monitoring is for rooms where I am 100% certain that I will never be in it at certain times, mainly overnight. Pairing the light safe zone with a specific time range will give me a lot more information than it might seem. I'm not sure if I'm gonna sound the siren, though I might because if a light is on at 4 a.m. in certain rooms, there's a problem and I should probably be aware of it. The final scenario is fairly generic, but I wanna monitor for leaks. This will be for under my hot water heater, under my kitchen sink, maybe my dishwasher, and where my water main is. Basically, if a leak is detected, the siren needs to go off because a notification to my phone isn't good enough in that scenario. I'd like to pair this with a smart water main shutoff valve one day, but for now, the siren is good enough. Now, I keep bringing up notifications to my phone, and they're super important, but what's more important is customizing the sensor name so that I actually know what's occurring. This is one area where I'd suggest that rather than using the default name or possibly even message, 
modify it based on the scenario. Using the safe example that I provided, if the safe door is open, a notification saying that the safe door has been opened or closed is going to be more helpful than a message saying that the light threshold has changed. This will also help you determine the severity. If the safe door is open and an unknown face is detected, you should be aware of that as soon as you read the notification because that's drastically different than the safe door being opened or closed. The final thing I want to hit on is why I will be replacing all of my sensors when there are Z-Wave and Zigbee sensors that I can use and in this case already own. And I can only give you my individual reason, but simply put, they just haven't been reliable for me. I bought a bunch of water sensors and they're not sensitive at all. In testing, I literally had to completely dunk them in water for a few seconds and only at that time would they actually go off and notify me. I've also had issues with my temperature and humidity sensors losing connectivity to my Z-Wave hub and the worst part about it is that I haven't known. That's probably been my fault because I'm sure I could have set up some sort of a notification, but the reliability that I would expect from these sensors is just not there. These aren't things that I monitor frequently. My hope is that if they have battery, they'll be connected, but I haven't had that level of success, unfortunately. I'm sure there are better sensors that I could have purchased, but I like the path that Ubiquity is going down with these, and especially like the fact that you can pair them with cameras and create alarms based off of them. To me, reliability is the most important thing, and I won't know how reliable these will be for a long time since they're new, but if they're reliable, that's a huge win. Now there will be a certain subset of users who will be upset that it's not utilizing Z-Wave or Zigbee. And I've already read comments where people complain that the Superlink is just another protocol. And I get it, there are a lot of them out there. But to me, reliability is the most important thing and I think that will slowly shift the market. I have a mesh Z-Wave network in my house and it's just not reliable and it's frustrating. Periodically, things will stop working and for something like a leak sensor, that should never happen. I have no idea how this will pan out from a reliability perspective long term, but I generally use sensors for notifications and actions and creating alarms in Unify Protect is a lot easier than a lot of other platforms. And it's going to be a win from a setup perspective because of how easy Ubiquity makes it. But in my short time with these devices, I am super optimistic about the entire Superlink platform and I think that there's a real opportunity here for Ubiquity to take over this entire segment. But I wanna hear what you think. Are you happy that Ubiquity is getting into this market? Do you plan on sticking with Z-Wave or Zigbee devices, or are you going to make the switch? Either way, I hope you got some value out of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but other than that, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.